Well, well, this well, well <laughs> we're, this is the bald and the beautiful, and we finally have somebody qualified on both accounts. Yeah, a, a double threat. She's an internationally <laughs> known housewife. Mm-hmm. She's a champion of uh, mental health, comedy, and sobriety. She's also an incredible um, reader of literature to the child, um, the child folk, children. She she has one of the most (laughs) beautiful natural eye colors I've ever seen. And an incredibly Mm. stunning um, disposition that lays men, lays waste to men near and far. (laughs) And she once told me my feet smelled. (laughs) And I'll never forget it. <laughs> we were backstage at the season seven premiere and you were doing some kind of yoga. You know that thing where you do the hand sta- the, the, the arm stand and then your legs scissor uh-huh, and uh-huh. then they rotate. Uh-huh. I tried it and I had my shoes off mm-hmm. and I said, I think my feet kind of smell. And Kasha was sitting across the room and she went, they do. <laughs> they, they do. And that's truth it, teller. It was at that moment I knew Kasha yeah. would never lie to me or let me down. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. Mrs. Kasha Davis. Kasha Davis. <laughs> oh my God! I know you boys. I feel like I feel like I was like with the, the two little nephews or something. <laughs> nieces it's i love that you can this storyline with i'm like literally three years younger than you kasha I, I know but let's face the facts you might be three years younger but you have a little bit more of a younger aesthetic and a following <laughs> yeah. I, oh yes i guess she's so, dressing yeah. outside her age bracket absolutely <laughs> yeah. yes those, those filters you're doing with the old age that now we look alike well i i have to tell you i love that because you know what happens um could, you know, I'm my skin is in it, horrible. Is, yes, I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah. You know what? I don't think your skin is that bad. No, no, no it's all relative. It's all you relative. Do, you, it's all the, relative. The problem is, Kasha. I, Kasha, I know you're that you're you're a beauty potion skincare girl, right? You take care of your face. Look at that material. Of course, she does. Yeah. I mean, look at this. I mean, this. I'm bleached out with lights. There's no. I use witch hazel. <laughs> But didn't we talk about once that you had acne? You were a very oil-prone acne young person, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I had all... But my parents taught me to just pop those zits. Okay. I mean, it was... <laughs> pop, pop those pop zits, zits and on. feed the children. And, yeah. Put alcohol on it. And I, oh, my God. Know. I mean to say that your skin... I mean, you have the skin of a very young person, I think. Yeah, it, it looks, at least from this screen, it looks beautiful. Yeah, from this iPad, poorly lit, thousands of miles away <laughs> on, my, on my Wi-Fi... Yeah. Stunning. It's even yeah. and smooth, and I don't see a blemish, a wrinkle, or a pore. Well, this is Botox just recently. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about it? I love Botox for the forehead. Yeah. yeah. I did it once for the lip to try to get that little thing going did on it there. Work? It did nothing. Okay. All right. Because no. I'd be curious. And about Darian it. gets her lips like, she's like, like mm-hmm. plumped up lips. And I just think I would look, you know, I'm already not the most feminine fella. Well, and Darian's allergic add- to nuts, but she loves that pecan pie and she just won't stop. So that <laughs> mouth just swells up every time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she she is into it. Yeah. <laughs> I love Botox too. I recently, I got it. I got the full, and I always tell them, I'm like, listen, I have a metabol, I have the metabolism of a velociraptor. You need to, <laughs> you need to, whatever you think is the Put- limit, double it. And well, I don't know. Go ahead. They, they all, and always there's one teeny little area, usually above one eye that they miss or that doesn't take or, or whatever, chews it up. And I, so I have, you can see here. Oh yeah. I'm trying oh, to wow. raise my eyebrows. Kasha, if you could see it, she looks suspicious. <laughs> yeah. See, it's horrible. Which yeah. I can't do that. I can't like isolate those eyebrows uh, normally. So I guess that's a fun thing, but yeah. So that's the, always with the Botox, I have to go for a touch up. I always go for a touch up. And then if you, I don't know if you could see, but there's like a line here. I get the droop, they call it. The droop. So this, is that, this part of my forehead, it goes. Really? And so I have, so I have to be careful not to get too much. Cause then all of a sudden these lids oh. will get heavier. Oh, <gasps> really? Yeah. Now would you be, um, I've been, so I, my studio mate is obsessed with plastic surgery. So I'm kind of like, I'm learning all these new techniques and stuff. And I've, I've learned about this thread. So it's, yes. it's a barbed thread that it, they, they, they take a cannula, a cannula, is that what it's called? A hollow needle or a something? A Kenya Michaels. Kenya Michaels. <laughs> no. A tiny yeah. little, a, a tiny, tiny little, little dancing ca- needle. A Kenya Michaels. <laughs> and it, it goes in and the, the barbs kind of catch on the muscle, right? And they, and they pull, pull it. Yes. And it stays in there. And so it it's dissolves eventually, I think. Like implanted face tapes, basically? It, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. But I just feel like it's like those, like, you know, bungee wrap or what are those things called? Those plastic things that. Oh, I can't zip think ties. Of it. Zip no. ties, yeah. like a zip tie with like yeah, razors it's, it's or something. Yeah, it's the barbs it. on it that kind of. Yeah. So wait a minute. Is this ignorant? Can bald people get facelifts? Because where do you hide the seam? You don't, you don't if you don't have hair. Under your lace front wig. Yeah, there you go. But is get it behind the ear? If you get like a male bottom yeah. yank, can you hide it behind the ear? Well, let's ask RuPaul. I was just going to say, Ru's got to know. Ru's, she got a, I think she got a full yank. Yeah, and she really lucks out because the deeper skin you have, the more chance you have to have some kind of unwanted scarring. Because mm -hmm. skin with mel like melanated skin can like scar more unappealingly differently versus uh, like right. really fair people. It's just going to be a scar. Uh huh. It's just. I think, I think that it's here. And then it's like back. Behind I think it's your behind ear. the ears too. Yeah, because I remember yeah. not to not to gossip, but I mean, I re do you remember when she was doing all those like scarves and stuff on late night. I was like, oh, she got a yank. She got a full yank. There's like that's it. That's absolutely that has to be. That's I'm, just a gossip I point mean, of view. I don't know. Her. I'm ready for the full bottom yank. The bottom yank? The, no, the, <laughs> the bottom half of the face yank. I think about it all the time. I do this. I've done this since my twenties. I'm always <gasps> okay. like. Tell no, us about it. it. No, no, but wait, no, wait, wait. no, 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 no. I always push my face up. Like I've uh -huh. all, I'm obsessed with that whole thing. Well, that's. I the, don't think those are the threads. That's. I the know, threads. but I think that you can tape, and I think that you could just highlight, and it's fine. You can also I, just practice acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> have you yeah. done <laughs> hashtag great on this podcast? Have you, have you done the tapes, Kasha? No, I mean I, no, because that's I sweat too much. Thank I you. Just stand. Not a and chance. I sweat. Not a chance. You'd be stroking off. out four verses into the song. <laughs> you'd have to yeah. do. You'd have to do so much, and you have to go around like you'd have to do the whole wrap the head, and then a wig cap, and then the. Do you know what I mean? You'd have. It's like yep. so much going on there. Well, I like to use. I use this shit. This like, um, medical like adhesive like wrap. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. You know, I, and I you use that. Oh, and you put, yeah. you put, yeah, okay, I got it. You kind of take it. I wrap all this. and wrap and wrap. And then I get that Jasmine Masters brain the looking thing in the, the brain. brain. Yeah. Oh, the little <laughs> the brain. The brain. <laughs> the brain wrinkle. And that, and, that mm. and sort of the force of the force, forceful wrapping just snatches it up. Ladies, do you like good, juicy brain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get yourself a head wrap. Get yourself tell you. a head wrap. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I wear so much makeup that I don't really see it, but out of drag, honestly, if we're going to, if we're going to be honest, I know most drag queens are like, well, I have to get the work done because I'm a drag queen. Mm -hmm. I don't care do about how it affects yeah. my drag. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I don't think it's because it, the drag is just slapping. You can hide anything. And we all yeah. have, I mean, even you, Kasha has a, you wear a lot of makeup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I do a lot of like foundation and like the contour and all that kind of stuff. And your but eyes then, are huge. You, know, you have huge eyes, you have giant lashes, big, you know, you do the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. she's a lady still, yeah. but. So there's a lot of forgiveness. I feel like with, if we're talking about wrinkles, blemishes or aged defining marks. Yeah. Right. You know, but it, I, I, I mean, agree with you during the day. It's all about, I'd be like, Oh God, that's when I would start to feel like. Oh. And it's smart. Caught show. Like, I guess you picked a character that, can age pretty gracefully because she's meant to be like married and settled and she's not the internationally known uh, fiance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll tell you this. Mr. Davis always says, he's like, oh my gosh, I like it when you try to be sexy or like, because <laughs> I have, you, you know, tell us about it. <laughs> grandma wigs and stuff all the time. And that's what I love or the glasses. And because, you know, Kosh is et eternally 50. And then, like, I'll get out of drag and people are like, oh, you look really good. I'm like, oh, because I, you know, Kosh is older. Right. Um, but so Steven or like Darren, they'll be like, oh, I like it when you do the soft. Like, I'll get over too many compliments when I try to look younger. Yeah. Um, Your husband's I'm not like, real com yeah, I it's okay. Like it. <laughs> does a husband, does Mr. Davis like you in drag? No. Not sexually? Uh, I, no. I mean, we've never even kissed like, we'll, like, we do our little life with the Davises thing, and we'll do, like, a little peck, and I'm like, oh, my God, he kissed. He's just, a, <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, meh. You know, it's not his his thing. He's That's always been very too, right? accepting yeah. of it. He's never been, like, uninterested in, like, you know, dating someone who is in drag or whatever, but he's just not going to, like, you know, yeah. put on your panties, Mrs. Davis. Let's <laughs> yeah, get busy. Yeah. I can't get hard unless the wig is on. <laughs> <laughs> Put on your Come fifty on. year old panties. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever have you ever thought about having sex and drag? <laughs> I, have, I don't know why that's funny. I don't know why that's funny. It's just the way that you ask the question. Have yeah. you ever <laughs> thought about it? 
No. Because I never thought about it in my 20s. And only in maybe the last two years have I been like, I don't know if I want to do it. Have you ever thought about doing it? Absolutely not. Not for me. It's And I, I have no problem with, you know, that, that do you do you do you. But it's just not, there's too much, too much stuff in the way. That, yeah. I was just going to say that's usually, the, it's a lot of like, you think about sex, you think about being naked. Yeah. Usually. So, I mean, sometimes. Yeah. Traditionally, yeah. let's say. Yeah. Well, but let's be honest. I don't know about you fellas, but for me, I mean, I don't get a lot of like, you know, uh, nudie, nudie pictures over my socials. And uh, after being <laughs> on Drag Race, yeah. I... By the way, that's Sometimes. her modestly asking the world. Yeah, yeah. Send yeah. Mrs. Kasha <laughs> Davis a little bit. She's consenting to the nudes, yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but like nobody was ever. My point is nobody yeah. was ever interested in Mrs. Kasha Davis that way. Uh, and now, like since Drag Race, people will send stuff. And I'm like, Mr. Davis, look what we got for tonight. You know. Yeah. Um, and it's always like an 18 year old from Argentina. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. It's never like a fit, a fit man your age in the area. Right. No, yeah, never. Yeah, always some well, guy in no. Germany. <laughs> Have you ever been it's, sent marriage forms? What do you mean marriage forms? I got notary. I'm a notary. I got like I'm looking to come to the country and I could be oh. an amazing husband for you. And like the, the, the it was like the first documents to like a marriage certificate <laughs> to start filling out. Start. Let's start the paperwork. Uh-huh, and I they mean, send that, dick pictures. That's oh kind God. of incredible. That's that is that's a good. that is an you know somebody who's going to close the deal. Yeah, so yeah. nothing He's sexier than assertive. marriage fraud. I was about 23 at the time, so <laughs> I don't think that's on the horizon for me anymore. <laughs> How long have you married, Mrs. Davis? Well, we're 18 years, we say. Holy. Because, you know, so much of it wasn't legal. We say 18 years, but it's only been four months. Oh, right, right, right. (laughs) Oh, that's right. I always forget. (laughs) Gay people. Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like since we got together, we were, you know, we were in it to win it. Right. Uh, We say 18 uh, 18, uh, married, you know, 10 10 legal, 8 happy. Yeah. Um, That kind of a thing. (laughs) Because <laughs> it's t- it gets tougher when you get older, you know, yeah. and uh, when you have a, a more tenured relationship, you got to spice shit up. Yeah, maybe throw the wig on. I don't know. Well, it I mean, changes, yeah. right? I mean, it, it ch- the relationship changes. I'm assuming. Shit, oh, here we go. <laughs> yes, the wig. Thank God. Oh, work. Oh my God. So we had a wig like that back in the wig shop. That was called Opus. Mm. Opus Winfrey. Opus. <laughs> Opus in that <laughs> color number two. <laughs> A two B, yeah. You got an opus and two B. <laughs> yeah. That's my, uh, my my good old Judy Garland wig that I've had oh, since yeah. like yeah forever. So so okay. Speaking of like, this is called the bald and beautiful. We often talk about beauty influences and style and stuff like that. We try to. <clears throat> who so Judy Garland? Who would you say your like top three beauty icons are? Oh well, um, Joan Joan Collins. You know the nineteen eighties dynasty kind of thing. Okay. Oh, um, I, can't, I can't believe I, that is so you. Yeah. Now that you mention it, yeah, you know. Then, but then, definitely like Joan, uh, Joanne Worley, Lucille Ball. Who, okay. Like, I don't know who Joan. Who's Worley. Joanne Worley? Yes, you do. So I, Nina I'm, West. Yeah, we must. Nina West did Joanne Worley as a part of. She's a comedian, and she was on Laughing. She goes woo, <laughs> and she swings the 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 pearls around her neck. She is a kook, kooky nineteen sixties uh, comedian. Okay. I'm gonna. I gotta look because we're not, about to get dragged. Yeah, yeah. In the comments, you no, know what? I mean, the 18 year olds who listen to us are gonna be like, gonna I don't fucking, fucking know, who- know it either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's not no. Billy Eilish, I don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they definitely don't know who that is. Well, you know, when but- you're like a 21 year old drag queen, you only know what you know, and then I think the longer you do drag, you go back deeper. You learn about the Joanne Worley's later. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's like the dress you just wore with the, you know. For your new single, Trixie, with the oh, the, the you know, crossword, the crossword, yeah. So she had that, like the mod kind of stuff. Oh, cool! I'm gonna 60s. look this whore up. Yeah, you better look her up. Laughing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, laugh. You you'll totally hate her, but I mean, you'll probably <laughs> more gravi- <laughs> you'll gravitate you'd gravitate more to the Goldie Hawn of that time. She oh. was, you know. Oh my God! I have an entire folder on my phone saved of Goldie Hawn from Hullabaloo. Ugh. Just so fucking hot, dude. So great. So beautiful. And the outfits and the hair. I mean, she makes me want to wear that short vanity wig, that new one, that like Go 60s little, little the, posh. The touch and go bow striver. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. It's like the yeah. little, uh, it's like a twiggy wig. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, and speaking of like, you know, Botox and plastic surgery, Pandora Box is working to get to look like Goldie Hahn's face these days. She's, oh, she's yeah. really. Yeah, Pandora's, but she's like in her 60s now, right? 
<laughs> she's <laughs> act, no, actually, <laughs> isn't Pandora like she's in her fifties, right? She's she's, she's younger. She's deceptively. No, is that horrible? No, yes, it is. I think she is wait, in her fifties. Wait, she's wait, not. Let, it's probably on Wikipedia, but I will Kasha. say, I will say <laughs> that she's just letting us hypothesize. She probably knows. The one thing I will say about Pandora is that I, for a white person, you know that like older white folks often look like who done it, but yeah. she. And in and out of drag, I was like, when I found out how old she was, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. She, Pam from True Blood. She looks in, incre- I mean, in great. Like, she's, she's, she's 49. Holy shit. See, I wasn't that wild. Holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah. She, she looks incredible. She's, she and Darian are 49. And then I turned 50 in March. Wow. I'm the first one to be 50. Oh my 50. God. Wow. So you guys are all, that's so cute. The three little like, trio. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You guys, I mean, Wow. Same age, same town. That's really well, special. Same, same mental town. problems. When I, came, <laughs> when I came to Rochester in 99, they were up on stage and I was just pissing my pants drunk in the audience. Um, having a good time enjoying the show. <laughs> but no, 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 no desire to do drag. When I first saw them, I just liked the show. It was great. You know, Darian was up there in her little Wonder Woman costume dancing her butt off. Mm-hmm. And Pandora was doing, you know, crazy mixes and it was so much fun. But um, yeah, so then eventually then I got to join that group, which was incredible. And when, how, how old you, so a late start, when, how old were you when you started doing drag? Mm, 2004. So what's the math? I don't know. Uh, 30 so something. Wow. Oh, that's a really late start. I mean, I say I have a late start and I think I started at least 25 or something. Yeah, these I mean, kids are doing it at 14, 12, whatever. Oh, people are like, I'm skipping college to be a drag queen because it's a get rich quick scheme. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. For some, yeah. for some, it's a great, you know. Isn't that wild? Don't you think? I mean, because you know, as well as we do, it's like, I mean, I never expected to get rich in drag and, or like, or ever expected to be cool. I thought I was rich in drag when I would be able to go home with like $100. Yeah. You know what I mean? Girl. Do you remember, Trixie, I don't know if you remember, but I thought it was the most adorable thing. I remember thing. We, Davis. Well, we were in San Francisco, <laughs> and your suitcase was full of cash, and you're like, oh, yeah, I just check it like that. And then you had a trash bag with merch that was ripped, and some of your cash was falling <laughs> out of that. And then you had a fanny pack that had a hole in it, and I was like, Oh, the fanny pack need- with a hole in it. <laughs> this wasn't even that long ago. This is after I'd done television. <laughs> A trash bag full of merchandise <laughs> with a fanny pack with a hole in it with money falling out. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, but I was like, Trixie, come on. And I was like, you have to at least iron, like, you know, fold those dollars out. You're like, no, it's fine. You guys, I just, I just came from, I just was so trash through college <laughs> and everything. Like, I remember coming home after it, when I was touring the first, you know, for, during season seven touring, I would come home with a paper bag, like a grocery bag rolled up. And it was like my bank. Now oh it's full God. of money. And oh if we're going oh out, God. I would have a, 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 a paper sandwich bag full of just cash. And I just pull it out at the bar <laughs> and like, and people were like, you need to stop that. You know who stopped it? Coco Peru. She watched me open a suitcase one day and money came out crumpled. And she goes, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and she like shamed me out of it. That's incredible. Good. Good. <laughs> but you're, I, you're booked through Thursday through Sunday, lip syncing and you're drinking. You're not going to yeah. stay up at 2 a.m. One... Uh, I did. You did? Yeah. Because oh, you had to dry out the costume. Because, like, yeah, they all had to, <laughs> I had to dry out the money. And, like, I had to lay everything out. I, the, the bills would be soaked, you right. know, with sweat. So, like, I had to also, I had to put out my panties and my undergarments and my tights. And then the cash had to dry and then it would become crispy. Well, I didn't have to stay up that late because I only had to count like 10 or $20. <laughs> so it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that she's all done. No, but. <laughs> I was like, it was the most adorable thing. And I was so, I have to tell you, Trixie, I, I get to do, you know, interviews as we all do. And I always say right from the get go, when we would have our little conference calls or stuff like that, you were always like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. This business plan. This is my merch. And I was just always so impressed with that. Thank you. And she did it. I am. And, she, and you, and you are still doing it. I and am the capitalist Even though sometimes I want to yeah. kick you right in the crotch. I'm like, good for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just always feel like if you build it, they will come. I just, I wish every, everybody should believe in themselves. Every idea is a good idea. That's mm-hmm. not true. That is absolutely <laughs> that not, is true. not true. I think what people, people can, should believe in themselves. Or yeah, I think that what can be, what it, it is inspiring about her is that she says, I, she has a plan and then she does it. Yep. And yeah. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter if it works or not. It usually works, but you do we it. Would be, 
Well, Kasha, we would be go go ahead. We would be well, we would be texting, and you'd say to me like, "So, what's your plan for merch?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I'm having a Chardonnay." Like, <laughs> I was just couldn't believe it, you know. <laughs> and I would get off the phone, and I'd be like, "Steve, she's planning merch," and he's like, "Well, let's see what happens." Now he knew damn well I didn't go far, so he was like, "We don't need to worry about merch." But um, <laughs> I went yeah, home before it was very you did. Inspiring. I know. Um, I just always think like with, <laughs> I don't know, merchandise. I mean, I used to print and ship my own merchandise. I, I can't, which even, was crazy I can't all even, through season seven. I can't even imagine. I would maybe, I would come home, you know, we tour bars on the weekends. I'd be at home on a Monday, listening to podcasts, stuffing people's shirts and bags. Oh my God. For a year, like a year and a half oh probably. God, I can't imagine. It was crazy. But, but you, and you, you did tell me on the set, like, um, if I'm still doing drag at your age, kill me. Oh yeah, when, when, when do I get the gun? I'm ticking off the days until I can. <laughs> well, I will say, you know, admit you guys didn't drag do drag as young as me, but I remember being 21 doing drag and going like 30 year old That's drag I, queen. Yeah, what thought, is that? I thought 30 was like well, yeah, depressing, and now I'm 38. So the right, old, you, you you keep thinking when you're young, you think like I'm not gonna do this forever, and then 10 or t- I'm I've been doing it 13 years, and now I'm like. Well, I know drag queens who are 60 mm-hmm. doing yeah. a great job. So yeah, the only thing I think is depressing about it, aging, quote unquote, drag queen is if it's not fun. Like that's the well, only thing exactly. that's depressing. Like a drag queen who doesn't want to do drag doing drag at 60 is it's like a Lin- David Lynch movie. You know, it, it's bizarre. Yeah. It also depends on your aesthetic. Like, I mean, Kasha, I think you're smart to pick something you could age with and into. Because wasn't well, Kasha yeah. older than you when you started? Did what? Kasha's is older than you. Like the character. You're just oh, now yeah, becoming yeah. her age. Exactly. Yeah. She was always 50. So I'm just catching up. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, she, yeah. Years old. So she's like, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're set in terms of age. Cause you're, you'll never really meet her. Yeah. And like, you know, well, you I, chose a character that's like an aged, <laughs> aged grizzled hooker. Well, I no, I, I think the only thing I did, I chose a character that's not consistently sexy because, and that's important though, because like, um, now I'm doing it digitally, but I like to p- explore being ugly because it, then it just refreshes people. You know, like you're like, oh, oh, yeah. You can't give them yeah. hot all the time. You can't give them be- hot all the time. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but though that face app you mentioned earlier, Kasha, it is for me personally. I love it so much, and then I'll put read. I'll take the old picture, and then I'll put it back in the program, make it older, and then so on and so and forth. And then the baby, and that yes, and then the, you're throwing a baby, and then but then when you do a regular picture, you're like. Oh, I'm gorgeous. Right. I'm, 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 I look great. Yeah. But really comes back down to what you said. You're having fun, oh, you yeah, know, fun. and you're trying different things. And each of you have done that. And I think that, you know, I work to try to do those types of things to keep myself interested. And that's what people like, you know, who Aggie Dune is. I yeah. think at least Trixie does. She 70 years like, old. She's 70 or 80. <laughs> she. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? She's, she's always like, you know, you've got to get on the microphone. You've got to do other things besides, you know, only lip sync yeah. because you want to keep yourself interested so that the world sees you're having fun. Yeah. Challenge. I like her. I feel like I like her a lot, Aggie. Yeah. She gave me, you know what? She gave me a teasing brush that I still have and still use. That's really sweet. I wonder if she knows that. She was like, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. She's like, we have them yeah. at the salon. Keep mine. And I was like, thank you. It was probably turquoise. Turquoise. She loves all her turquoise She stuff. does hair. In, Darian does hair too, right? They both so do she, hair. Yeah. She owns the salon where Darian works. Oh, cool. Bunch of fags clipping hairs. But yeah. No. Bunch of just drag fags. We're going to take I, a break. Don't be fooled, folks. Though my sense of humor may be dry as a bone, when it comes to personal hydration, I take wetness very seriously. Liquid IV. Liquid IV. You would be surprised if we could actually get the facts and figures about who is really dehydrated these days. I'm going to go out on a limb and say everybody. So get yourself some liquid IV. What makes liquid IV so effective, you're asking? Well, listen up. Here's the answer. Cellular transport technology. Listen, one serving of liquid IV provides the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water alone. 
five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, and as much potassium as a banana get out of town. Healthier than sugary sports drinks. No artificial flavors or preservatives and less sugar than an apple. Too good to be true, you're saying. No, it's liquid IV. Grab your strawberry liquid IV or other great flavors in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code BALD at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code BALD at liquidiv.com. Get better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code BALD. Hi guys, guess what one of my favorite movies of all time is? Batman Returns, of course, featuring the iconic Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. What did she do in that movie? She slayed, she served, she did the whole damn thing. What she didn't do was leave a nasty, disgusting mess you know, filling up kitty litter boxes with poop pee and who knows what else, barfing and shit. No, she was fierce, flawless, and ferocious. And that's just how my little kitty gets when I use my pretty litter kitty litter. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> it's super light crystals. So light, they trap odor, release moisture, resulting in dry, low maintenance litter that doesn't smell. Oh my God, Michelle would be so proud. And Pretty Litter is virtually dust-free because it's manufactured with a specialized de-dusting process. Less dust and no fuss. I wish I knew about that, honey, 20 years ago. Pretty Litter arrives safely at my door in a small, lightweight bag that lasts up to a month. Can you believe it? That's four weeks and some change. Now that I get litter bags auto-shipped, I don't have to deal with last-minute trips to the store. And I, you know, let's be real... When I go to the store last minute, it's always the same kind of situation. Diarrhea. And then I'm going to need the pretty litter. Here's the bottom line. Get the world's smartest litter without leaving home by visiting prettylitter.com. And use the promo code BALD for 20% off your first order. That's prettylitter.com. Promo code BALD for 20% off prettylitter.com. Promo code BALD. And we're back (laughs) with Kasha Davis. Kasha, can I ask what what kind of outfit and drag? Do you, what's what's what do you feel the most sexy in? Mm. Oh, a housewife dress. Say it slow dress. so I can touch myself. A housewife Thanks. dress, really? <laughs> what yeah. is a housewife dress? I think you look hot in those little Tina Turner dresses with the sequins. Oh yeah, the little the shimmy All dress. All leg, yeah, a leg, and fucking leg, yeah. jacked arms. You fucking bull dagger. <sighs> oh yeah. my god! <laughs> I'm back to working out. I did. I started back with a trainer because I'm like, you know what? Why the hell not? Absolutely. You know, I want to turn 50 and be like, this, these arms are great. The gut will always be what it is. Um, <laughs> you know, at this point, I'm like, <laughs> I have been trying sit-ups for years. And I, you know, I can't even get one ab going. So I'm like, it's just going to be what it is. You got corsets for that. That's the hard, I think that's the hardest thing. Like, what? to abs? Like, oh, yeah, in drag, when you're a man, when you're male, born male, oh. you gain weight in the middle yeah, really can, yeah. only. <laughs> yeah. And so then well, it's like, yeah, it's tough but in the I, face. Yeah, But I also think, like, when I first started drag, it was all about, like, hide your arms. I used to have uh-huh. to wear, like, that shrugs yeah. and, like, don't let anybody see. But I'm so excited how more and more now people are, like, you know, you know hairy drag, yep. arms out, whatever. And yeah. it's like, there's, it's just whatever, whatever you want to do to express yourself. I just love that. So, you know, she's building her arms back up. Great. Yeah. I like, and I like it when, um, I love how it's, it can be very polarizing certain aspects of like that gender play and how, um, heated and impassioned people get about it. Like, it's like oh, anger is, I love that. The people like, you know, um, I don't know anything from like, yeah, beards or whatever. Like people get really up in arms about it. I think that's fun. I think showing arms is Whenever there's correct proportions, you can show anything. Yeah. And I never care when I see other drag queens' arms, but I don't feel comfortable showing my own very much. Unless they're slathered in makeup and I have a huge wig on. (laughs) Well, (laughs) seriously, like, when I see, like, Kasha showing arms, it doesn't bother. I don't think twice about it. But when I'm in drag and look in the mirror and see arms, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I need to cover, you know. Well, yeah, because that doesn't go with your, like, extra small petite French vanilla fantasy. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) And if I do show arms, full coverage foundation to the armpit. And contoured. And contoured. <laughs> contoured arms. Why? The skin or? I just want it all to match. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to yeah. me, if makeup, if, if it shows, it goes with makeup. Like, I paint the hands, it the shows, ears. It goes. The back of the neck. Wow. That, okay, I mean, I, well, could, I, I, wish I, I wish I had taken her advice, like, from the jump. Because I, I recently saw a clip of me. And I was featuring at least four very distinct <laughs> shades of skin, like that, w- ranging from, 
yellow ochre cherry tomato yeah. cherry tomato to like raw sienna and then a corpse gray <laughs> which interview was it um it was a was I, it the exposed on the couch? interview yes yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. And I had no assistant that day. And I was like running late and I'm like, oh, I really did wear those those fishnets. I wore those tights with no fishnets and had in my hands look like the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. The Crypt okay. Keeper. And the foundation, I think it also has to do with the color balancing. The course, foundation yeah. really picked up the, the yellow. Yellow. So her face is yellow. Her neck is red. Red. Her hand is gray. And, and her legs are like a black tight. The brown. They were like, it was, it was okay. pantyhose, you know, but with no well, fishnets. I mean, listen, you just taught me something, but most of my filming is done on my iPhone in the basement. So I don't have to worry. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. you know, we're just doing this. That, well, that's so, smart. But yeah. I think that is, I have noticed in photos, I'm like, wow, those legs, my, you know, my leg color might not match. So it, I see what you mean. It's, and that's like it's hard, hard. It's hard to do. That's why a solid, opaque, color tight is a really, uh, like a good choice especially drag queens like we're yeah. wearing Whatever. multiple layers of light suntan yeah. there's no way your face is going to match that because you're not yeah. bart simpson or right. something that's why a black fishnet <laughs> is like kind of like you have to do it always if you're gonna i feel like yeah you know. did you did you ever get those shimmer tights to go underneath and try I, that the like, lady bunny tights yeah do you like well, do, you, do you guys like them personally i have never been able to make them work <laughs> i can't make them work so they they seem to take away the definition on your your the mus the muscles in your legs. I yeah. don't know what happens. Yeah. Where like a regular tight will still show your leg, mm -hmm. but then when I put those on, I'm like, what the heck? There's there, there's no definition. Like something changes. It's bizarre for me. That my my I feel like I agree. Like for somehow it appears that the the muscle definition is gone, and also they look at the same time fat and too skinny. It's so bizarre. Mm -hmm. They're it's, like yeah, it's, it's really so weird. weird. The shimmery ones also don't stretch as much. So uh -huh. like an extra large in this shimmery, you need a two, a two X. Yeah, I've always, right. they always end up looking a little gray on me. So it's like they have little like like wet gray chicken legs. I don't know if people know what we're talking about. Think oh. of like Lady Bunny's legs, shimmery yeah. brown. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a they're, it's a shimmer. T I don't know. It looks Lady like Lady Bunny's legs are the color of peppermint's boobs. Yes. Yes, just yes. gold, <laughs> yeah. bronze, shiny. Yeah. yeah, peppermint calls them her golden globes. <laughs> 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 It was her birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Pep Pep. Happy She's birthday. She's also 50. <laughs> yeah. So what have you been up to, gal? <laughs> <laughs> what have I been up to? Well, you know, you said it earlier on. I love my story time and mm. I'm working on, uh, we got some sizzle reels and some pitches out to, you know, streaming platforms to try to get that kids show going is the dream of mine. Oh my gosh. So it's, it's like, you know, imagine Pee Wee's Playhouse slash, you know, the campiness of Pee Wee. Mm -hmm. And the honesty of Mr. Rogers. Oh, that's great. So, you know, that is something that, fingers crossed. But then Workhorse Queen is a documentary that was done um, over the past couple of years by Angela Washko. And that is premiering at Slamdance Film Festival, February 12th through 25th. Oh, shit. That's fantastic. In L.A. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Have you been to a film festival? I've been to, they to a film festival. Yeah, they, I've never really been to one until semi-recently, and they don't sound exciting, but they are. When you get there, it's they really are, yeah. cool. Well, I mean, this is obviously because of COVID. It's streaming Ugh. online. But, um, yeah, that's it's. I think they're fantastic. And, you know, people are just, you know, it's new artists a, a lot of times, which I think is really cool to be able to see the opportunities that they're, you know, putting out there. And, and I mean, I'm just, I'm so humbled and flattered that she decided to tell the story and there's some shit in that documentary that, you know, like even my husband says that floored me. Wow. So I, you know, watching it, I know it's me, but I was laughing and crying and uh, I'm really excited that it's that it's out because I remember when I first started, I, I was doing my my show. There's always time for a cocktail, which tells my story. I was so anxious to tell my story. And Mimi, I'm first was like, girl, nobody knows you. They don't want to know your life story. Why don't you just lip sync a song first? <laughs> Mimi, I'm first. Keep it real. <laughs> Mimi, I'm first keeping it so real. <laughs> but, but she was right, you know? She's like, nobody knows who the hell you are. So she was right. And so now time has gone on and I'm excited about it. You know, so what, it obviously talks about sobriety. Right, right. And, um, do you feel weird? And, do you feel weird watching people talk, watching? Do you think it's going to be weird having people watch you talk about that? Well, the whole thing is weird. I feel like 
number one, I'm turning 50. Number two, here's the story of my life and all the people that have died. Oh I feel like it's the movie that's playing like as we're all sitting around at my funeral. Oh I'm my like, God. I love it already. <laughs> yeah. Did they have cameras following you around? Like what was the, what was the process like? For a couple of years. So oh, at man. the time I was, I was going to Australia. I was, oh, uh, drag cons. Wow. So she had followed me everywhere. That's a lot. That's and, a, that's a commitment and a labor of love. That's like, did there, did you ever feel like, do you ever have any moments where like, get that fucking camera away from me or you felt too exposed or raw or whatever? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was definitely like, there were a couple of times at DragCon where, and it, and she shows it. Like I tried to do a story time at DragCon and I think five people came to the, um, you know, the, the seminar or whatever you call it. And I was like, oh, you know, and I'm like, why Maybe are you, you shouldn't have called the kids show a seminar. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it Maybe called? they thought what you were called? trying to hustle timeshares. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? What is it called? There's a children's called? seminar. <laughs> yeah. Come, children, yeah. to the seminar. There's a PowerPoint. <laughs> We've got great property in Boca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of what they're called. Uh, the, uh, uh, the oh, like the, a the, like the, a panel. The, panel, panel, panel. The panel. Yeah. Thanks. So yeah, like nobody was at it. I was like, wow, this is great. But that's the good part about the story is it shows no matter what age you are, you know, you can have dreams and you can keep following them. And that's that makes me happy that that message is out there. Mm. Tempest Azure taught us that, and I always think of her um, since she passed. <laughs> Girl, everything in her house passes. I'm you... just kidding. Tempest Azure is alive. If everyone's listening, it's just yes. a joke. It's just a joke. But you cracked me up that day when you said something. Does anything in your house, any animal in your house, live? Oh I people were so mad. People were like, "It's a sensitive time. How dare you?" I'm like, "Girl," because I know her like that. Yeah, you I know, know Tempest you, du Jour you, was standing over the dead animal's body, trying to find something to laugh about. I mean, that's her vibe. Yeah, but oh, she yeah. has all these like, rescues. I, yeah, and she's like, "Woke up today, the penguin killed the tarantulas," and I'm like, <laughs> "What?" <the?" laughs> right. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> So she's got a she's got a pretty pretty dirty sense of humor and a funny sense oh, of she's humor too. Rotten. So. Rot yes, rotten. Rotten. <laughs> and you want to talk somebody who doesn't age? Yeah. Tempest du jour is running the streets of West Hollywood in drag with like six <laughs> porn actors blackout drunk. And she's like, girl, come why aren't An you out? I'm like, it's Monday. <laughs> it's 1 p.m. <laughs> she when we were when we did our season seven tour, we were in Vegas and I think at that point we had lost candy in New Orleans. We got to Vegas. Two. I mean, she she never made it. We Two. got to Vegas. Conge and congenital I, heart failure. I went to like the nickel slots all night. And Trixie was, or, um, what's her name? Uh, Tempest was like, I'm going to bed. And I'm at the nickel slots. I'm like, I'm having a good time. Not so the, nickel drunk, slots. the nickel slots. <laughs> yeah. So she comes in the morning to get me and she's like, we're not going to be candy. We're not going to miss this. I am passed out drunk in drag on the bed. She's like, get dressed. I was like, she came in like mama bear. Wow. And yeah. And it was get on that plane. And then we got on the plane. <gasps> wait, 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 Lady wait, Bunny, wait, 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 wait. You were passed out in, in drag in the morning? Yes. Because I went to play the nickel slots in drag. And so you're in bed in drag sleeping <laughs> and Tempest du jour has to get you on the plane. Holy, that's shit. A, that's a, yeah. I feel like that's a, um, that's a jackpot. <laughs> yeah, right. I won. I won. Yeah. And then I got on the plane, and then guess who's playing footsie with me? Lady Bunny. Who's playing footsie with you? She's play, she's playing footsie with me, and she's like, "Hey, gotcha. And I'm like, <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. "Oh, no, no, no." No, no, no. I know. I was like, oh. Jeff Daniels, no. <laughs> oh, my God. What? A, and, and then you're hungover, and that made you wretch right yeah. there on the plane. That I need to see that in the documentary. Did you just look over your current cold weather wardrobe options and get a chill? It's time to ditch that old sweater and upgrade that jacket. A Stitch Fix personal stylist can help you pick new pieces that are timeless. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. It's a completely different and fun way to find clothes that you will love to wear. Every piece is chosen for your fit and for your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion at all. Whether you're a woman, man, 
or child. They ship all over the U.S. and available to the U.K. as well. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash bald and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash bald for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash bald. Kasha, I got to tell you, I'm sure you don't miss the hangovers. Oh, God. I think I spent the, like 10 years hungover. Ugh. I mean, yeah. I think I mean, of I mean, like I mean, when I was doing clubs, like, you know, you know, when you first do drag race, we were all doing the nightclubs. And when you're doing nightclubs, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, every morning you're hungover and you're like, what am I doing? How do you yeah. do that? Because yeah. every night is sick pride. when you Do you feel like physically sick? How would you describe a hangover, Kasha? Uh, I mean, for me, it was definitely like headache. I never, I, I was never one who like retched or puked okay. all the time. I would just be like dehydrated. And essentially. Does it, but it also is, is it that like hair of the dog thing that you kind of get over it by drinking more? So like they say that is not true. I've never found that to be true. Okay. No, you're basically just getting drunk again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hair of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog is uh Jim Bean. <laughs> yeah. I, you're just getting drunk again. To me, a hangover <laughs> is like it's worst it's the worst right when you wake up. And it just feels like your body's got cement bricks on it in bed. And you're like, oh. And then yeah. you're so dehydrated that like your eyes hurt to open. Oh, God. And it hurts to hear noise and see light. It's just everything. Wow. Sign well, me up. That see, sounds like so you, bad. You were working on trying to get sober the next morning. I was like, well, give me an hour with you know breakfast and then I'll have another shot of something on the sly. Wow. I know. Um, your book, There's Always Time for a Cocktail Until There Isn't. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Until that clock That's, runs out. Until, yeah. oh my God. It's oh my also God. the anti aging miracle is just don't drink. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. It is. Drink water, lots of water. Well, uh, it's amazing how many performers in general, not just drag queens, but performers in general who are, who are sober. Um, it's a tough lifestyle. I feel like, yeah, because I feel like at a lot of a lot of uh, sectors of this entertainment industry, you're either like an active fucking drunk or you've gotten sober. Seriously, when yeah. you're a drag queen and you didn't, you say you don't want to drink, people assume you're either in the program, yeah, or nothing else. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah. But in order to sustain, in order to sustain a drag career ten years and beyond, you have to change your relationship with alcohol yeah. because being twenty one and drinking every night because you're at a bar, it's that's not sustainable. No, it's just no. not. No. And you also think you're f more fierce and funnier, oh, and God. and you yeah. believe all of that, and then you look back and you're like, Meh. yeah. What was Maybe it like? Not. I mean, because I'll never forget the first time I I performed not dr drunk at, in drag. And I, it was like, I, I was, I had a different body. I felt like I was on a cruise ship or something. The, the, it was so bizarre to not be drunk in front of an audience doing my wiggle numbers that I right. was like, it was like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Cause I felt so self-conscious and it was like, it was like, oh God, this the is, song suddenly feels really long, long too. Long, yeah. long and boring. Right. And like, and you know, it's just a whole thing. Was that like, what was that like for you? I mean, it was definitely a little uncomfortable, but if I think back, maybe I had more experience with theater and dance. Okay. So it just, I didn't go out on, you know, on stage for the Nutcracker hammered. Um, <laughs> but it seems have. like in drag, that's okay, right? Yeah. Um, but then what's what's even, what I loved was doing like hosting or stand up. And you know, when you, you can't remember the next word when you're drunk, you're just, there's a blank. Yeah. But when you get that blank, when you're sober, you're like, okay, it's a blank. So hang on, something's going to come. And then something funnier comes mm. because, you know, you're clearer and you can just like work through those moments. Yeah. Um, but when I was, when I was drunk, I'd be like, well, I'm just leaving the stage now because nothing, uh, you know, nothing else is coming, which was essentially all of my appearance on season seven because it wasn't drunk, but it was Xanax. I had a, no I had a little Xanax way. over in my station. What? You are joking. Yeah. So that's why, I mean, I'm so, I want, I, I, I hope someday to be cast on all stars. Maybe I'll be like, Zanny I will be awake, everybody. You know, like, wow. I was asleep. Kasha, you would be a great all stars competitor. No fucking shit. Would you do that shit? I oh. totally would. Yeah. Oh, then get, get Bob. Katya wants to do it again too. I would love to do it again. Well, I mean, yeah. Alaska said she I would do it should. again. Yeah. Why the hell not? Why not? And then once you take the pressure off, I mean, <sighs> doing it the first time is stressful. Doing it the second time, Kasha 
it's a whole nother ball game. It's like, who cares? It's fun. It's like, fun. It, yeah. It's like, I would just think right. of it as like a, a TV appearance. Oh, I get to do one again tomorrow. Great. If not, get to show yeah. a dress and you know all the drag queens. So it doesn't yeah. feel weird. Yeah. That's, exactly. Yeah. I don't want to meet any more new queens. <laughs> no, I want them to die. <laughs> you know? Well, remember when you be in that confession, the confessional or whatever, I'm like, I don't even know. They were like, what did you think of everybody you saw? I'm like, I don't know who they are. <laughs> I, I'm Who? like I, 13 other the girls. Only, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. yeah. The only one I knew from before it was Miss Fame. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, you know, <laughs> we're going to take a break and then we're going to talk about your big bald head. And we're back. Kosh, I have to ask, when did you start shaving your head? I've only ever known you as shaved head. Oh my gosh. I think it was after my mom died. I think the stress of that was just like the hair went boom. Really? It's just like so much of it fell out. You're and I had the whole Mr. Burns thing going on, you know? Okay. So I have it on the sides and back. And I was trying to grow like these five or six hairs and our daughters were like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Maybe I, I first like, called yeah. you again to bully you further. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She said, girl, yeah. shave your head, you fucking pig. Uh, <laughs> no, our daughters, we'll see, the youngest is 26, this, the other one, uh, oldest is 28. They used, they were the, always the, the worst critics. They would come, we bring them to the shows and they would be like, um, add some of your jokes <laughs> afterwards. All you hear is cricket, oh cricket. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. That's incredible, Kasha. The, the, I mean, it, if you want to know how was, your show is, get the people close to you who do not think you're famous to come to your show. Absolutely. And it gets very right. clear. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. I mean, they were like, and and this is early, like you know, I would. They're like, who's Judy Garland? Could you do some? <laughs> they're like, what about like Katy Perry? Can you do some of this stuff? And so I would try to do the songs they'd want, and then I'd be like, this just doesn't seem right. Like you know, I'm out there like grandma uh, doing Katy Perry, but I, you know, they would challenge me to update myself sometimes. And I, I loved that, but they were the ones they were like, it's time to shave your head. It's All my favorite shave. drag Queens are people who can keep an eye on their original influences and keep an eye on what's out there now. Yeah. I think a Chad Michaels is a good example of that where, yeah. you know, they'll, she'll do a 50 year old song and a song that came out this week. Yeah. She's got one set. foot in the now, the other foot in the Cretaceous era or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Or Dolly Levi. Oh my God, da Dolly Levi. The 11 dancing you know, toes of yeah. Dolly Levi. Uh, She's 112. And just She's 112. Backst- yeah. Incredible. Backstage with Dolly Levi, the stories, they just go on and on. And you're like, please just get me a, a piece of coconut cake from Hamburger Mary's. <laughs> and I can sit here and listen to you talk all day. <laughs> I love that. And you know, when I started in drag, there was no drag race. And so I wanted to be... Co- uh, you know, Varla Jean Merman, Coco Peru, Miss Richfield is my original inspiration. Oh, right. You know, and so those were the stars to me. And, uh, and you know, going to P-Town, that was like the goal, you know, yeah, to go there and have a show. And because there was, it was, I mean, yes, there was RuPaul, but that was like unattainable, unheard of. It was drag queens were cabaret performers. You yeah. know? Right. And so I'm, those are the people that I'm attracted to. Yeah. I would, Coco was my like a dream model. Yeah. Cause she, she did monologues and she was like, it, I just love the way that she, you know, that was like, I want to do that. Yeah. yeah it, right. It's still weird to me that I even like know her now. I know. And she's so wonderful. I'm She's she, amazing. She's one of the nicest people yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. yeah. She's really amazing. I mean, her shows are, it's like a flagrant display of talent. It's yeah. like the Ben and Jinx Christmas special. It's a slap in the face of talent. You're <laughs> yeah. like, do we quit? Yeah. Let's quit. Yeah. So, and you've worked with her, I'm sure, as well. She has the full script. Oh, in, it's in, memorized the, to yeah, a T. There's no improv. She doesn't even change the commas or the periods yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. And like the paper's not even dirty. Like mine would have <laughs> all like coffee stains on it and scribbles and self doubt. Like that whole paragraph's got to go. No, she's like, there's blood. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, she's just, phenomenal. You should do a summer in P Town. It uh, was like the hardest thing I ever did. And it really is like baptism by fire. Oh, Because some nights so, there's 16 people there, rich faggots who will only laugh if it's incredible. Oh, well, I did two. I was there once with Pandora and Darian. I think. I we, remember that. Yeah. And then I, I came back the following summer and just did my show at the Parliament House. And one of the best things that's ever happened to me was to be able to, to do that show. Because again, as you said, there was like five, 10 people. Milk was having a show that at that time and Tammy and we were all like, 
Richfield sold out, Varla sold out, and we have, <sighs> you know, five to 10 people. But one of those people was Miss Richfield 1981, and uh. she sat through my whole show in drag, and she was just sweet and kind and loved it. And I was like, she was like, you know, just keep keep working on it. And I was like, that was a moment for me. It was like just a wonderful moment to be able to have her there and to to watch that. Because I just, I adore what she does. So Yeah. And you know why? I mean, in, in Provincetown, there's just Cape Cod, if nobody knows. The reason those performers have those, obviously they're incredible. But they've also been, Varla's been performing there for 20 years. Yeah. So oh, she yeah. becomes these people's annual tradition. Yeah. And the shows are extremely high quality. But like, yeah. if you want to be stripped of your dignity oh, and yeah. stripped of any pride or entitlement, go to Provincetown. Yeah, because even a 20-year <laughs> veteran with amazing talent, she's still on the fucking street barking like everybody oh, yeah. else. Dina Martinez out there handing out flyers. Yeah, that's, yep. yeah, it's, it is not, nobody's a star. Yeah, I mean, no. they are a star, but they're, no, it's, yeah. It's My like, first summer, there are 55 shows. I barked 54 of them a year after I did Drag Race. And I barked wild. them all because... And A, I only sold out four times the first summer. And B, I was like, I know that these older drag queens are going to hate me for being a TV drag queen and coming here and doing this. So I yeah. need them to see me barking every day so they're not yeah. like, fuck her. Yeah, Absolutely. But again, I love that. I love that work ethic. And yeah. I think that, that that means something because it is sort of, you know, it's their town. It's what they've they've built. And m remember the night that I, I think we saw you, Marilyn May, a cabaret yes. legend, Oh my God! I went to that. Look her, yes, look her up, Katya. Marilyn her name May. is Marilyn, Marilyn May. May. Okay. She used to do these old Lincoln Mercury commercials back in the seventies, and then she's still she's like ninety something, and she's still out there oh, doing shit. her cabaret show. Yeah. And who's in her audience? Bob Mackie. Yeah. Wow. And Kasha Davis, yeah. I was there. Holy she does shit. like uh, she has like kind of like Ethel Merman like uh, character voice singing. It's super good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a couple more questions here. Kasha, take this any way you want. When did you know you were beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> I never did know I was beautiful. I, honestly, I uh, look back at old photos from when I was a kid. I was like, wow, I look pretty good. Um, <laughs> always had uh, image issues with myself. I've seen pictures. When you post the young pictures, I mean, they're basically ac accidental thirst traps. You're a very attractive <laughs> young man. Well, you're very kind. Um, yeah, but it's like so funny because I look back at that and I used to be like, wow, I was I used to think I was so fat or I used to think, you know, uh, you know, I grew up in a town where there was no such thing as being feminine or at anything like that. So I was just a lot of self-loathing, to be honest. Well, it's funny you say that, you know, the, um, the you know, feminine stuff. I was talking to somebody the other day about how... Um, how common it is for fans of drag race to misuse the term trade in terms and referring to like the male contestants out of drag. And I was like, the only real trade of any season was Mrs. Kasha Davis. <laughs> <laughs> What's the real definition? Let the children know. Well, really it's, it's a, it's, it's a, usually um, like an unclockably, uh, it's like a straight acting guy who would trade sex for favors. Or like oh. a, like an actual straight guy, you know, and I'm um, usually like um, Kasha did a lot of that on Drag Race, yeah, trading but like, sexual but, favors, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, I could, did. All the you time. could like traditionally, you know, she could pass for a dude, and then that's trade, yeah. Sarge, me and Sarge. Oh, Sarge, do you remember? You know Sarge, of course. Yeah, Pepper Wintergreen, as the children know oh him God. now. Oh, Wintergreen, that's Wintergreen. Right. Green. Yeah. I suck this shit right out of his asshole. You're such oh an icon. <laughs> I just love you, Kasha. Yeah, thank you, Kasha, oh so God. much. I'm so happy we've, touched, we've kept in touch all through the years. I'll tell you what. You know what? Uh, I know that I'm annoying, and I like to <laughs> reach out and be like, I am. I'm, I am annoying. I know. I reach out <laughs> to everybody, and I'm like, how are you? And I hope you're well. And I mean it. You know, like, I'm that Hallmark card You texter. are not I annoying. Just... I love that you keep in touch with me. I get texted me all the time, and I'm very, I'm yeah. very grateful. I know. Well, you're sweet. And I know, like, because I'll text Bianca and she's like, oh, bitch, leave me alone. But I know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I care about people and I know how hard this business is. And I just, I'm always very impressed, you know, with people who work hard and you're both, you know, just, I love it. You're following your dreams and you're going for it. And yes, you may have opportunities, but you just keep on working. And I love that. Well, when the world opens back up and you do like a little LA tour, I hope I can see you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And we gotta well, go. Hopefully. We gotta go crash Bianca's place in Palm Springs. Yeah. Oh my God. We all we Take all something need to off go the walls. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sit in her closet and get all the feathers that are not chicken feathers. Yeah. All the all the turbans <laughs> you can carry. Um, <laughs> Kasha, where can everybody find you? Oh my gosh! In the suburbs of Rochester, New York, <laughs> in my basement. No, uh, you know, on the www on Insta, Snatch, Twitter, Face Place, and TikTok. Which I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why Water, these kids are talking to a face clock. Place and TikTok. Are you on TikTok, Kasha? Are you doing TikTok? I am. I, I have. I finally have. I think I have thirty some thousand followers, and I'm still not a check mark, but I'm working on it. Kasha's on TikTok. I gotta check you out. I'm trying to get into it. How do I get a check mark? I want to get a check mark. Darian got one. I, I don't know who she check paid. Mark. I want my check check. Um. Well, so we'll okay. Maybe so we can maybe um um. Do uh, uh, a a uh, a TikTok trend thing. Um, yeah. I'm always I'm always fascinated by those and how to do the worst transitions possible. Um, yes. And so it's at Mrs. Kasha Davis on Twitter, right? Yep. Yeah. And then on Instagram and so so on and so forth. Oh, here yes. you are, Kasha. Oh, Mrs. Kasha Davis. Mrs. Kasha Davis. There she is. Oh, look at you're oh, standing yes. here with some oranges. Wait a minute. Oh, look, she's oh. kicking shoes. Kasha <gasps> Davis kicking is kicking it. the shoes. Oh, you better kick a fucking sh- Yes! Work! <laughs> oh, this is great. Come on. You look amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know. Wow. Thanks. Do you make any of your costumes? Absolutely not. Um, everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wanna- I get them all from Davey. You've gotten some things from him. Thatch work. Dave- oh, yes. He is amazing. Yeah. I love his stuff. And um, so I get stuff there and then I get Casa Glam wigs and she's good to go. I was telling Katya, I get my fingernails at Marshall's for $3.99. <laughs> Marshall's? And she's ready. Oh, yeah. The clearance section, honey. Check it out. I get mine on Amazon. Oh, well. I wear well, a short, duh. square yeah. French tip. <laughs> yeah. Don't be like me. <laughs> yes, I wear nails sometimes that are shorter than my real nails. I was going to say they're like <laughs> so. Oh, there you go. Look. Yeah. <gasps> Dress to impress. Dress $3.99. Yeah. That's nice, right. though. Yeah. They're irregular because they're all thumbs. Are they better than the... K- <laughs> you know it's bad when you have to buy toenails so you can do your own thumbs. <laughs> I know. That's when it's bad. <laughs> all right. Bye, Kasha. Oh, thank you, Kasha. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye. bye.